All right, the Daniel Defense, the DDM4 V7, that bad boy right there. So if you haven't seen my initial review on this thing, I will leave it linked down below, but this is the last follow-up video for this thing because I've changed several different things on here. So by no means am I saying this thing will not do everything it needs to do right out of the box. Not the point I'm getting at. What I'm talking about and what I've changed on this thing are to tune this thing a little better and make it, I guess, what I feel a $2,000 plus rifle should be. Because depending on which version you get, you could find it for $1,800 or you could spend well over three. There's a big variance in price there when it comes to the Daniel Defense. And anytime you bring up a brand like Daniel Defense or Knight's Armament or any of those big companies that have those sweet military contracts, especially if they're making stuff for the special ops guys, you get absolute brand loyalists. And I have to tell you, I love me some Daniel Defense. I've carried Daniel Defense stuff for a very long time, but still it left a little bit to be desired. So what I wanna go is kind of break this thing down into what I finally landed on with a mix of buffers, springs, triggers, little changes to it to make this thing kind of what I wanted and where I think it really should be for that price point. And I know someone's already commenting, they're overgassed on purpose to run with bad steel ammo and dirty. I get that, I totally understand that. But overgassing a rifle to a certain extent can make it run everything, can also cause a lot of premature wear and some other issues that we'll get into. So we're gonna take a good look at all the stuff that I've changed on here, kind of show you how I have it rigged up and then we're gonna explain what those changes will do from the changing of the gas system and how that's gonna work and run with the buffer and the spring, the trigger, the brake on this, all that, because those can have a dramatic effect on your rifle. You can also be asking for some problems if you don't know what to look for, especially in that ejection pattern. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get into this thing, talk about all those little parts here, get subbed up, get belled up, turn the notifications to all notification icons on so you get the videos when they come out. If you like anything that's going on here, or if you're a Daniel Defense fan, definitely hammer that like button. We're gonna get into this rifle right now. All right, let's go ahead and knock out the Daniel Defense. This is the final rig on how I'm gonna keep this. Now I've got it tuned in the way that I like it, and it's running ammo, whether it's clean, dirty, whether it's brass, or whether it is gnarly steel stuff. So let, quickly, we're gonna go over some of the basic specs. If you wanna see the in-depth review of this one, that's another video. This is the third video in this series, tuning this thing in because it's a little gassy, didn't have the best trigger, but this is all optional stuff. You can run this thing right out the box. So let's go ahead and talk basically, it's a 16 inch rifle, has a mid-length gas system, which should be pretty soft. Great internal parts here from the uh, 9310 bolt carrier, cold hammer forged barrel. It's got good options on it. Adjustable stock, a good feeling, more vertical instead of angular grip here. Lots of good stuff going on, but let's go into what I have changed on this. And let's go ahead and start with, uh, well, first let's get the sling out of the way. So people keep asking about the slings that I've been using if I, won, if I run single point or two point. I've run single point slings most of my life. There are advantages and disadvantages to both. These ones from Flatline Fiber is what I have been running for the past several months in a two point conversion. And I really like them and I'm really transitioning back into a two point sling because there are advantages there to a two point, which we can get into in another video. Talking about the lower receiver here. First thing I changed on this that I had a serious problem with was the safety. So the safety that came on this one was your traditional mil spec long one. It was ambi, so it was on both sides, but it was not a 45 degree. And if you think about it, look at the size of the safety since I am right-handed that's here. Now, if it was that same size and not the stubby on the offhand size, what you end up doing is you end up hitting your finger right there, which is exactly what it did every time I tried to engage it. So this radiant safety here, I love these things. Absolutely awesome. Um, I pretty much put them on all of my setups or some version of a safety like that. This one is just the easiest one. Great setup. Moving forward from that, the trigger. So we're gonna do some pull tests on this. 
Originally, I had the Timney DH3 two stage in here. I now have the Blackout Defense. This is a four pound trigger. And you just look at that thing, absolutely sick trigger. I did a full video on that. I prefer single stage triggers. That is just me. Um, huge improvement. The factory trigger in here was absolutely gnarly. So moving into the back right here, you can see the buffer says H2 on it. So the original Daniel Defense uh, for out of the box came with a heavy buffer and a standard carbine spring. Talking about the upstairs right here, Trigicon MRO on a quick detach, American Defense manufacturing mount right there. Troy Industries battle sights, both front and the rear. I prefer the HK style. Just draws my eye in a little bit better. The Daniel rails, absolutely outstanding. These rails can take a ton of torque, a ton of pressure. Uh, they do come set up with your QD points right there if you wanna run a two point sling, which is definitely nice. Then you can add different sling points wherever you want. Got the mod light on this one with the mod button on it. Outstanding light. That thing is an absolute flamethrower out there. Ton of distance. Little uh, Midwest Industries barricade stock right there. I don't like putting a bunch of stuff down on my rails. This is plenty to work with. You get the secondary sling point if you want to run that sling way out on the front. And then up front to finish that barrel off the VG6 Gamma brake on there that makes a huge difference. So that is the nuts and bolts of what I have changed on here. Let's go ahead and do some trigger pulls so you guys can get an idea of what this trigger is pulling at right here because it is pretty nice. We'll just do a couple pulls. And yes, I pull low because that's where I put my finger. So it's marketed as a four and a half pound trigger and that was sub four, so about three pounds and 14 ounces. And we'll pull a couple different places on the trigger shoe to kind of demonstrate where your finger is can affect the pull. Okay, so I pulled up quite a bit higher and that was actually over four and a half pounds. So we'll do one more and we'll go right for where about a finger would be in the middle. And you can see we are four pounds and about four ounces. So where you place your finger has a huge impact on the feeling and how light that trigger is going to feel. So with all of this stuff on here, specifically what I did to tune it in, let's talk about what that actually does to the feel and the operation of this rifle and can changing the buffer and the springs and all that actually cause problems if you don't know what you're looking for. All right, so that's a pretty decent amount of changes on there from the brake to the buffer, to the buffer spring, the trigger, the safety, and then all the other stuff. They're just add-ons that most of us are gonna do anyways. But let's start talking about that gas system and how this thing's gonna operate. But first, we're gonna take a look at my Mark 18 upper here and how that recoils with a pistol length gas system, a heavy buffer, and the same spring in here, and we'll check that footage out right now. Now, being that that is a pistol length gas system, you're generally gonna feel more of that recoil impulse, and you might not have that super fast follow-up shot. That break on there is not the best, it's just the one that's on there at this point in time. Let's go ahead and compare that to how this thing now recoils with a mid length gas system, that break, the different spring, and the buffer. Now, I don't know if you can tell the difference, but out there, you can absolutely feel the difference. So I've calmed that other 10 and a half inch down quite a bit from when it was when that was first built. And now this Daniel is definitely far more calm because the first day I had this one out to the range, the first couple drills I ran, this is what I had to say. Shoots heavy. Yeah. Shoots a little heavy. Now by saying that was heavy, what I meant was is you could absolutely feel a massive difference in the recoil impulse between this and pretty much all of the other rifles that I own. And I wasn't expecting that based on the gas system and the brake and everything that was already in there to include that H buffer because in a lot of my other rifles, I'm only running the carbine buffer and this one still had a much more pronounced recoil impulse. Now by no means am I saying you can't take that and work with it how it is. Understand the 5.56 does not have some insane recoil impulse you cannot control. 
It's very controllable. It could just be tuned a little bit better, at least in my opinion. And here's where we start talking about one of the things you can cause when you start messing around with your gas system or your recoil management system back here in this buffer tube. If you go too heavy on the buffer, too heavy on the spring, you can either get failures to extract, or you can get really weak extractions out of the chamber. There's a chart online, I will throw it up here in a photo so you can see it, but there's kind of like a clock position on where you want your brass or steel or whatever you're shooting to be ejecting out of that ejection port. That's gonna be one of the telltale signs of if you're overgassed, undergassed, ejecting appropriately, and there are other small things to look for as well. But the key is if you can't run it as fast as possible while it is dirty without maintaining that good ejection pattern, you probably have too heavy a buffer or too heavy or too long of a spring. Don't go trying to put rifle springs and carbines and carbine springs and rifles. You need to spend some time figuring out while that thing is dirty because that's gonna slow the bolt down as well to make sure yours is gonna run under any circumstance. As far as the business end goes, right there, VG6 products, absolutely love them. That gamma brake is one of my favorites if you're not gonna be running a suppressor. Does an amazing job when you're out there in that firing position. Of just, you are gonna know that you've got a big gnarly brake on there and your friends are not gonna like you and the guy on the range next to you is probably gonna ask you to shoot somewhere further away. Now as for that trigger, that thing right here, money. So if you haven't seen my video on the blackout defense trigger, that thing is absolutely hands down the best trigger that I have personally tried. I've tried lighter ones. I've tried two stage ones. I've tried a lot of other budget brands. Um, I've tried everything from the CMC stuff. I've had Geisley triggers before velocity triggers. I've had a bunch of different setups. This one hands down the cleanest one I have tried a little bit pricier than some of the other like budget options from rise or even Timney but it's an absolutely great trigger that has actually been hand finished and polished on the corners, which is definitely pretty sweet. And it, it's a local company. So I'm a little bit biased because they're literally right down the road in the city that I live in. But several other trigger companies like Timney and Vlo, those are all local companies as well. It's just this one definitely turned my attention. Now, as far as everything else goes from the mod light to the flip up sights, the optic, anything else you want to do or that flat line fiber two point sling, those are all personal preferences. So that's completely up to you. Got this one, how I wanted to build it. I wanted an MRO, just wanted to play around with that one. Not the greatest optic out there, a little bit more parallax in that than say the aim point, which is noticeable at distance, still an amazing optic. Now the question people always ask is, would I buy this thing again? And it's kind of a two part answer. It's a yes and a no. And the reason I say that is I wanted a Daniel Defense. I like some Daniel Defense products. Um, I said that at the beginning, I'm in no way affiliated with Daniel Defense, but I like their stuff. It's definitely high end. It's definitely made well. Everything from the bolt material to the cold hammer forged barrel, great setup, but it is pricey. So because I wanted it and because I had the budget to buy it and build it the way I wanted to, yes, because I already bought it and I built it this way, which means if I didn't want it, I probably would have sold it. Now, looking at it from the other aspect of it, is there something else out there in that relative quality range for a lot less that's gonna do and perform everything that this one can? Yeah, it's called a BCM. And uh, it's also about $700 cheaper or close to it depending on the model you get. I wanna say that like the Recce 14.5 or 16 is like a 13, maybe 1400. Uh, and you can usually find them a little cheaper where this one comes in like right at the two grand or 1800. So there's a disparity in that price point there. And again, people are absolute brand loyalists and there's nothing wrong with that. Buy what you want, buy what you feel you are comfortable with and what you have the budget for. You can't go wrong with either one. I know that's a two part answer, a yes and a no, but I wanted it. I like Daniel Defense. I love the way this thing turned out and it's gonna be one of my main sweeties that I'm gonna put a ton of rounds through because this thing I've got probably 3,500, close to 4,000 rounds through it now. The vast majority of it is steel, probably 70, 30-ish in that range because I had a ton of steel laying around and I know this thing is going to eat it up. Well, that is what I've got for you all today. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing the final video in the Daniel Defense DDM4-7 series right here. Like I said, love the rifle, put some money into it, built it the way I wanted. You can do if, if you want. You can buy something else if you want to. Always completely up to you. 
Huge thank you to all you viewers, everybody that's liked, that's shared, that's subscribed, that's done anything here for the channel. Massive, massive thank you to all of my patrons. You guys are absolutely awesome, and I appreciate everything that you guys do for me. Check out Shall Not Comply if you're looking for any of the clothing or to support the channel, or you can use any of those affiliate links down below. You guys, get out there and have some fun on the range. Remember, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready, and I will see you guys on the next one.